Good afternoon. Before I uh, speak about student debt relief, I want to make — take a minute to talk about what took place yesterday uh, in the Congress. I'll be very brief. The House will now reorganize and select a new speaker. I know it's going to take some time, but I remind everyone, we have a lot of work — we have a lot of work to do, and the American people expect us to get it done. The argument we reached uh, was uh, — all about what to, what comes next, but we had an agreement. We reached an agreement over the weekend. Funds for government, only another 40 days. We cannot and should not uh, again be faced with an 11th-hour decision. Uh, brinksmanship uh, threatens uh, to shut down the government. And we know what we have to do. We — and we got — we have to get it done in a timely fashion. More than anything, we need to change the poisonous atmosphere in Washington. You know, we have strong disagreements, but we need to stop seeing each other as enemies. We need to talk to one another, listen to one another, work with one another, and we can do that. I join with Minority Leader Jeffers — excuse me, Jeffries uh, — in saying that our Republican colleagues uh, remain committed to working in a bipartisan fashion. We are prepared to do it as well, for the good of the American people. Twice in the last six months, both houses came together on a bipartisan basis wants to avoid default, wants to keep the government open. And while we should never have been in the situation in the first place, I'm grateful that leaders on both sides came together, including former Speaker McCarthy, to do the right thing. Now, turning to student debt relief. When I ran for president, I vowed to fix our broken student loan program. Because while college degree is still the ticket to the, uh, a better life, that ticket has become excessively expensive. Americans who are saddled with unsustainable debt in exchange for a college degree has become the norm. Since my administration has taken significant action to provide student debt relief to as many borrowers as possible as quickly as possible, that starts with making sure the existing system works in the way it was supposed to work for student borrowers. We fixed what was called the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program which was designed originally to make sure school teachers, firefighters, social workers, and other public servants can get their student loans forgiven if they make 10 years of payments and do 10 years of public service. By the time I took office, that program had been placed for — in place for nearly 15 years. But because of red tape, only 7,000 borrowers had been helped. Well, today, thanks to the reforms, more than 700,000 borrowers have had their debts forgiven. Just the other day, I spoke with Tanya and Chad, a married couple in their 50s, who both work at public high school in Milwaukee. For years, they paid over $800 a month toward their student loans. It meant they couldn't pay — put away any money for retirement. And this summer, thanks to fixes we made to the debt relief program for people in public service, Chad and Tanya's remaining balance was forgiven. Tanya said, quote, the amount of relief this gives us is indescribable, end of quote. Now they can finally start savings for retirement. Next, we fix what's called the Income Driven Payment Repayment Program. And here's how that works. If you have an undergraduate loan, after 20 years of straight pay, not missing paying the debt on, the, on a monthly basis, whatever is left of your loan is forgiven after 20 years. But because of, of administrative failures, some people who did pay their loans for 20 years or more did not get the debt relief they had earned. We fixed that and made sure borrowers got credit for every single payment they made. As a result of these changes, today I'm announcing my administration has approved an additional $9 billion in relief for 125,000 borrowers in just the past few weeks under that program. With the latest debt cancel cancellation in total, my administration has canceled $127 billion in student debts for nearly 3.6 million Americans. This kind of relief is life-changing for individuals and their families. But it's good for our economy as a whole, as well. By freeing millions of Americans from the crushing burden of student debt, it means they can go and get their lives in order. They can think about buying a house. They can start a business. They can be starting a family. This matters. It matters with their daily lives. This latest progress builds on other steps we've taken. We made the largest increase in Pell Grants in over a decade, helping students and families making less than $60,000 a year get to college. We made additional improvements in the income-driven repayment program. 
Before I took office, student borrowers would pay no more than 10 percent — pay no more than 10 percent of their discretionary income on a monthly basis if they wanted to do it that way. But under my administration's plan, which is called SAVE plan, we reduced that to 5 percent for undergraduate borrowers. It's now the most generous repayment program ever. Under this plan, no one with an undergraduate loan today or in the future, whether at a community college or a four-year college, will have to pay more than 5 percent of their discretionary income to repay these loans. This in — that's income after you pay for necessities like housing, food, and other necessities. You can sign up for the SAVE plan at studentaid.gov slash SAVE. Studentaid-gov slash — studentaid studentaid.gov slash SAVE. And remember, if you keep up your payments after 20 years, whatever's left in those loans is forgiven. And we're still not done. As you might remember, last year I announced a major proposal for student debt relief. We're on the verge of providing more than 40 million Americans with real relief from their student debt. The money was literally about to go out the door, but Republicans ele and elect Republican elected officials and special interests stepped up and sued us. And the Supreme Court sided with them, snatching from the hands of millions of Americans thousands of dollars in debt and student debt relief that was about to change their lives. As I said at the time, I believe the Court's decision to strike down my student debt relief program was wrong, but I promised I wouldn't give up. Since then, my administration has been pursuing a new approach, grounded and under a different law, the Higher Education Act. This act allows the Secretary of Education to compromise, waive, or release loans under certain circumstances. <clears throat> Last week, the Department of Education took a critical step in this process by identifying specific challenges that borrowers face in the current system so we can move forward with a new rule to address these changes. For example, there are many borrowers who have made payments for many years, but because of interest, they still owe more than they originally borrowed. My administration is doing everything it can to deliver student debt relief to as many as we can as fast as we can. This is in contrast to uh, House Republicans who helped block the previous debt relief plan nearly shut down the government over the extreme demands, which would have hurt hardworking families. But they had no problem with the Paycheck Protection Program. Remember that? The PPP program during the — during the uh, — the last several years, which was designed to help business owners who lost money, which was legitimate, because of the pandemic. Members of Congress got over hundreds of thousands of dollars in order because they lost — their businesses lost money. That wasn't a worthy — it was a worthy program. But let's be clear. Some of the same elected Republicans or members of Congress who were strongly opposed to getting relief to students got hundreds of thousands of dollars in relief for themselves to keep their businesses open. Several members of Congress got over a million dollars, and all those loans were forgiven. The hypocrisy of this I find stunning. I supported that program, and I support the student debt program. My administration will continue to use every tool at our disposal to help ease the burden of student debt so more Americans be, can, free to, can be free to achieve their dreams. It's good for our economy, it's good for our country, and it's going to change their lives. Thank you very much. Mr. Mr. President, President, Mr. President, Mr. President, Speaker McCarthy, if I can. Speaker McCarthy, then Speaker McCarthy, said that the two of you hadn't spoken directly in a long time. Why is that, and are you committed to engaging more regularly with the next House Speaker? We had two agreements. We shook hands with on, and uh, I uh, assumed he was working with. Uh, I knew he was working with the Democrats in the House and Senate. It wasn't for me to uh, do anything. If he wanted to talk to me, I was available. I'm available to whomever wants to talk to me. But the idea that I was going to somehow convince McCarthy to change his view was not reasonable. Can I ask you back to question very quickly? Does the disarray on Capitol Hill after your conversation with allies yesterday worry you that you won't be able to deliver the aid that the U.S. has promised to Ukraine? It does worry me. And, but I know there are a majority of members of the House and Senate in both parties who have said that they support funding Ukraine. With your uh, — I'm going to be announcing very shortly a major speech I'm going to make on this issue and why it's critically important for the United States and our allies that we keep our commitment.
Mr. President, are you also concerned about the rest of your uh, domestic and foreign policy initiatives being in peril because of what we saw happen yesterday, the dysfunction in Congress, uh, the chaos that we saw on the House side? Does that concern you in any way? <laughs> the dysfunction always concerns me. The programs that uh, we have uh, argued over, we passed bipartisanly. I'm not concerned that they're going to all of a sudden come in and try to undo them, although there will be some. There will be some, I'm sure. There's uh, half a dozen or more extreme MAGA Republicans, Republicans who would like to eliminate just about everything I've done. Um, but uh, I, I don't think that's going to get there. Mr. Well, President, have you, have you, 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 you if, I, if I may, um, without additional funding, how long will the United States be able to support Ukraine? We can support Ukraine in the next tranche that we need, and there is another means by which we may be able to uh, find funding for that, but I'm not going to get into that now. Mr. President, have you promised President Zelensky attacks for Ukraine? Say again, sir. Have you promised President Zelensky during his visit in the White House that you would provide Atacans, the long-range missiles for Ukraine? I have spoken with Zelensky, and everything he's asked for, we've worked out. Tell us a little Mr. More, President, your tell us a little bit more about this speech you're going to give. What, what argument are you going to make? <laughs> Why don't you wait and listen to it? <laughs> I'm going to make the argument that it's overwhelmingly in the interest of the United States of America that Ukraine succeed. And it's overwhelmingly in our interest. I've spent two and a half years putting together coalitions that no one thought could be put together. And they've strengthened us across the board, not just as it relates to Ukraine, whether it's Japan and South Korea, or whether it's what's happening in Europe itself. And so I think that uh, it's clear to the vast majority of the foreign policy community on both left and right that this has been a valuable exercise for the United States of America to increase the support we have around the world. And what I don't want to do is uh, we, put, we put together over 50 nations. 50 nations supporting Ukraine. And we have the, we are the organizer of that. I met with, uh, don't hold me the exact number, 16 or 17 yesterday in a long conversation, and uh, made the case that I knew that the majority of the American people still supported Ukraine, and the majority of the members of the Congress, both Democrat and Republican, supported it. So I don't think we should let them gamesmanship get in the way of blocking it. Mr. President, what's the plan for the business? Sir, not that they're asking, what's your advice to the next, next House Speaker? 